Dr. Susan Spillman here. What makes Magical You different? This is a question that uh, I'm always very interested in trying to clarify. Uh, I know that it's quite different than most of the other modalities that work with uh, feelings and identifying feelings. <clears throat> uh, but I, it's hard to explain what that is. And so I wanna do that uh, right now to give it a shot. So it really has to do with subconscious programming. And this is a mouthful to say subconscious programming. And I'm just gonna give you a brief overview of it. So what we have is we have the conscious mind, you know, and this is our thoughts and our feelings that we're aware of. So, you know, we're happy, we're sad, we're, we like something, we don't like it. That's our conscious mind. And our subconscious is that part of ourselves that is, of course, below the conscious mind. So it's often uh, thoughts and feelings that we're not aware of. We can become aware of them, uh, you often fairly easily, uh, but, but they're under, under the surface, so to speak, okay? So just to give you an example of this uh, with, with children, and of course this happens for most of us, most all of us as children, okay? And sometimes, of course, it happens later in life, but children is a, is a good example. So a child falls down the stairs, okay? His, her mother has already said to her, please be careful, you know, it's dangerous on the stairs. Be careful when you're on those stairs. And the child is old enough to understand that uh, in general. However, the child still trips and falls down the stairs. So the child is scared, right? This child is scared, shocked, um, crying, very upset that she's fallen down the stairs and that her mother had said to her, be, be careful. The mother likewise is except, uh, upset and shocked, right? Oh my goodness, what happened? She fell down the stairs, is she hurt? You know, I told her not to do that, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So we know the, this kind of scenario. And it, it's not an uncommon scenario uh, that happens. And what happens with it related to the subconscious is several things. I mean, there's, there's several outcomes to this, or two major outcomes to this. So just to clarify that. So one is that the mother who's very upset is so upset that she runs over to the child and says, why weren't you listening? I told you not to do this. You've hurt yourself, you know, why didn't you listen? So the mother's upset, the child's upset. And what happens very often is that the, what the child takes this as, as negative, okay, negative. I'm hurt, mommy doesn't care about me, mommy's mad, you know, she's just mad. I've made a mistake, mommy's mad. You know, that gets into the subconscious of that child. And that may then stick in the subconscious. Later, the mom could be talking to the child and say, oh, I'm so sorry, I was angry at you. Um, you know, I was just upset. It isn't about you, it was that I was upset. You know, the mother can, can repair that, can repair that. And then it can resolve itself. But if it doesn't get repaired, very often the child will carry that feeling with her later into her life, into later childhood, into adulthood often, with a feeling of when I'm hurt, no one comes to help me. I can't count on people who care about me to come help me. I mean, this is, can be a very, very big deal, you know, as, as you can imagine. <clears throat> on the other hand, if the mother who's very upset realizes, okay, I have to be really careful what I say uh, to my child and can say to her, oh, I'm so sorry you, you fell down the stairs. You know, are you hurt? What, what's the matter? What, how can I help you? That kind of thing. Then the child has a very, very different experience, okay? She has an experience that people who care about me can care about me even when I make a mistake, even when I'm hurt. So you can see these are very, very different trajectories in, in life, you know, that, that the child can take. Not to say that this always happens in this way, but uh, it can happen in this way. And 
what we often find as adults, if we look back on our childhood, that we've had experiences with our parents where we took something they said, we found it very negative and hurtful, and then we held on to it. So whether the parents meant what they said or whether it was because they were upset, I mean, there are lots of different scenarios, but we have taken on something that our parents said to us and, and then we act that way in the rest of our life. So where you find this is when you find repeating patterns in your life, whether it's relationships with work, with how you feel, uh, doesn't matter. If you, once you start finding repeating patterns in your life, then you know there's something from your subconscious that's stuck. You know, that you're repeating a pattern from earlier in your life where you took something in and meant something and, um, and it's up upsetting your life. So this is a, a great time to look at that for yourself as well, of course, as being aware of it uh, if you have children and how, how you affect the children. Now, so the other hand, so that's called negative subconscious programming when something like that happens. The positive subconscious programming is when the parent can come and say, oh, I'm, as I said, well, I'm so sorry, you're hurt, I can be helpful to you. I mean, can I help you? And this can be helpful to the child then, and then the child feels that people can come and help them when they're, when they're scared or make a mistake. Again, this has huge ramifications for uh, our life and the child's life. So these are just things to think about around subconscious programming, how important it is and how important it is to be aware of it, that, that it exists for one thing. And then Magical You has an ability to help you release that subconscious programming. So, and it has an ability to do this very, very quickly, which is unlike many, many forms of psychotherapy, which take for a long time to release these kinds of things, if in fact they release them at all. So the game has a, is a, of cards, cards that have images on them to help you identify your feelings. Because one of the things we find is that actually people don't know how they feel. They might feel sad or angry, but they don't have a very wide vocabulary and awareness of their feelings. So for children, it's important for them to learn to identify their feelings as children. And for adults, it's important for us to identify our feelings as adults so that we know how we're feeling. So that's the first step in Magical You. And then the second step is where did this happen? Where did the feelings come about? So it could be home, it could be work, school, it could be in relationships if it's adults. And we, we get a little story about this, what's this all about? And then we release it and we do a, uh, a release over the guiding meridian. We, in the meantime, we've checked in where we're holding those feelings in our body and the number zero to 10 self-report. And then we're releasing it to release where those feelings are stuck. So that's what we're doing with the guiding meridian. Release the feelings that are stuck. And then we check to see what the numbers are. And, and then we ask, okay, what do you need to release this even more? Sometimes people release things very, very quickly and children, of course, release things much more quickly than adults. Uh, but uh, if you haven't released it, you know, we ask, what do you need? Or even if you've released it, it's like in the future, what would you need in, in a kind of similar situation? Um, and then we have like cards that identify feelings such as um, needs, needed, needed feelings, which are such things as uh, listened to, supported, a hug, a friend, that kind of thing. Then we do another release, trying to get the number down as far as we can for that particular time. And then at the end, we have something we call, uh, how would you like to feel? Those kind of cards. And that has to do with happy, safe, strong, special, cards like that. And then what this is, is this is positive uh, subconscious programming. So we're now shifting, we've released the feelings in the subconscious, the negative uh, subconscious programming. 
and now we're putting in positive feelings. How would they like to feel? And we have a particular um, procedure of doing that so that the person leaves feeling, usually feeling much, much lighter, happier, uh, freer, and, um, and just happier. So I'd be happy to show you more about this game. If you're interested, uh, get in touch with me and my email, Susan Spillman, sorry, Susan Kutu at gmail.com. And uh, I'd be happy to show you the game in more detail and show you and the cards which are which are worth seeing. Okay.